GM denies it, but we don't buy it. GM denies it, but we don't buy it. GM denies it, but we don't buy it. We're here today because Colombian General Motors workers are starting their third week of hunger strike outside the United States Embassy in Bogota. These workers were disabled on the job. They were dismissed by General Motors without workers' compensation, without retraining, without disability payments. They've been occupying the curb outside the U.S. Embassy for over a year now, continuously and peacefully. All they're asking for is justice. They know the United States still owns one-third of General Motors. They know the labor action plan agreed to by the U U.S. and Colombian governments is supposed to guarantee that labor abuses of this sort will stop. Today, people across the U.S. are taking it to General Motors directly. In Detroit, there'll be a rally outside GM headquarters. In McLean, Virginia, there'll be a rally outside the residence of GM's CEO. We're here today in Portland because four of us here have met these workers personally. We've seen the scars on their bodies. We've met their families. We know how serious this is. And we're asking everyone to join us in appealing directly to General Motors and to our government to act now for basic justice for disabled workers in Colombia victimized by General Motors and on hunger strike. For a year, there was no uh, support from the United States and, and nothing from GM to try to fix this problem. So starting on August 1st of this year, uh, they began a hunger strike. Uh, and so it's two weeks into the hu hunger strike, or almost three weeks into the hunger strike, and uh, several days ago, a number of the workers actually sewed their lips shut uh, to show their seriousness about maintaining this hunger strike uh, for as long as it took for them to get justice for these uh, work-related injuries that they didn't get any workers' compensation for and that they got thrown to their street, they can't feed their families, they're surviving off the uh, love and, and solidarity of their local communities. Uh, and in the meantime, they're taking this drastic measure of a hunger strike uh, to show the world that this injustice needs to be corrected. So I guess we're calling on everyone to make this issue viral in their communities and throughout the country and throughout the world so that that pressure causes the United States and General Motors to do the right thing and to correct this problem for the workers. We're here to tell GM, General Motors, do the right thing, sit down and negotiate with your workers, take care of them and their needs. These workers have given you their hours, their time, their salary. They have given you their family time, their children time, their children play time, so they can build the best uh, of the cars and you in exchange have fired them because they got injured at your workplace and you are denying what happened in your workplace that's a shame on you you know how workers um, accidents happens that's part of the job so you just gotta take care of it and pay for their medical bills and make them whole as much as you can and their families firing them is not gonna get you anywhere that's not an american thing americans we take care of our problems and responsibilities we face them so we're asking you we citizens here in portland oregon to take care of the workers shame of you we will continue fighting you protesting you and broadcasting everywhere in the united states what you're doing this is not okay to mistreat workers in Colombia. What we want is you to represent Americans with pride overseas in Colombia and everywhere. So we're not going to let you, uh, you know, create bad publicity for Americans here in the United States. GM, shame on you. This situation is one example of globalization. This is what happens in a globalized economy where multinational corporations can exploit the situation that's the weakest in terms of labor rights and victimize workers without consequences. In this particular case, there's a recently implemented free trade agreement between the United States and Colombia. We were promised, the people of both countries were promised by our presidents that a labor action plan would precede the implementation of that trade agreement and it would improve the climate for labor rights. All this happened really has been on paper so far. In the workplace, very little has changed. Union leaders are still killed. People are still fired as these workers were unjust. People still cannot organize unions. People still lack direct employment. 
In Colombia, there's a widespread situation of injustice in the workplace. This is one of the worst examples of that. And what's more, in a globalized economy, this is our future. If we don't act now to put a stop to this sort of abuse, down the road, we'll experience it right here at home. We're not going to tolerate to America the streets, this is back company to destroy families in Colombia and anywhere in the world.